Hello everyone, it's Shane Conto, your Wasteland Review, and welcome to Wasteland Talks, my weekly talk show where I talk about whatever the hell I want, and I got my buddy Rod here to talk some football, because football is coming back, and we have an interesting season to talk about. Is Aaron Rodgers going to lead the Jets to the Super Bowl? Jets fans certainly think they will. Um, I don't, but we'll talk about that. But Rod, thank you so much for coming on. And it's always a pleasure being able to come on here and talk to you. And whenever we get to have you on our podcast, too, it's just, it's always great just hanging out with you, man. Absolutely. Now, it's time to talk about each of these eight divisions that we have here in the NFL. I figured we'd start with the AFC first, um, the world of Patrick Mahomes. Um, so let's start with the AFC East, which used to be... <laughs> which used to be the land of Tom Brady. And now I guess they want it to be the land of Aaron Rodgers. But I know you have some things to say about that, seeing uh, as we have a Dolphins fan here. So, yeah, oh yes. Oh, Rod, yes. what are your general thoughts about this division? And who's going to um, win it? General thoughts are, like you said, I mean, being a Dolphins fan, I'm so used to this Tom Brady, this owning this division every single year. You know, the the, the one thing as a Dolphins fan you get to look, look forward to is the annual Tom Brady comes to Miami and choke game because he always loses in Miami. <laughs> um, and now the last, what, three three or four years now, it has been owned by Buffalo for good reason. That is a well-built, a well-built team. Miami's coming, though. And, you know, Miami got into the playoffs last year. I know Tua was hurt. Uh, for about four or five games, but when he was playing, he was on. He was one of the best, three or four best quarterbacks in the league when he was playing. Um, so Miami, I think Miami has arrived, Shane, but of course, you know, the top of the, the story of the AFC East is Mac Jones. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Aaron, Aaron <laughs> Rodgers. <laughs> uh, Patriots last place. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Belichick. Aaron Rodgers has arrived. I've been watching Hard Knocks every week. I'm actually going to watch it as soon as we're done here. Oh, nice. uh, it's really entertaining, actually. But, you know, I hate the Jets. And I'm actually an Aaron Rodgers fan. So it's just, it's kind of weird. Everyone's expecting Super Bowl this year from them. And we have seen in the past when a quarterback transitions to a new team, in the past couple of years, you know, Stafford to the Rams won the Super Bowl the first year. Brady to the Bucks that year. Now, that team was loaded. Offense, defense, that team was just ridiculous. Um, and Brady was still really, really good. Mm -hmm. But I think Brady was also on a mission that year, too, Shane, of, like, wanting to prove that he can win. It was more of him than Belichick than anything else. Well, I think that's being reinforced more and more with uh, the Mac Jones experiment that maybe Belichick had Tom Brady. Um, exactly. Which this podcast isn't about arguing about who's the best coach in football. But, you know, Andy Reid had a lot of success with the Eagles. He did. And then he showed up in Kansas City and did better. Exactly. Than he did in Philadelphia. So it's kind of like. I don't know that cheesesteak power, but yeah, that cheesesteak power. But so I don't know if the Jets are going to win the. I, I think they'll make the playoff game. I don't. I don't see them going to the Super Bowl. Not in this first year. Well, they almost made the playoffs last season. Of oh, Zach Wilson. Whatever the hell that was yeah. of of starting quarterback rotation of. Joe Flacco and Zach Wilson and well, I will say this though, Shane. I will say this: if any quarterback is in any great position right now, just to sit and learn, it's Zach Wilson. Which I just want to. I just want to say this. So I'm not an Aaron Rodgers fan. Uh, he kept complaining about wanting to play. Brett Favre left and everything, and then he got to spend all that time learning from Brett Favre and then has complained about having backup quarterbacks behind him who are going to replace him. So I'm interested to see how much he actually would want to help Zach Wilson learn anything. Right. Um, I'm also – well, I think there's more to it than that, though, Shane. The Packers also weren't doing their due, dil their due diligence and their responsibilities of giving Aaron Rodgers help 
you know, right. drafting well and everything. So I, I think there's there's well, Aaron Rodgers a lot of definitely are. has no problem telling people how he feels about things. Just right. ask Pat McAfee. Um, <laughs> um, and I'm still in the much more skeptical camp of Aaron Rodgers. What Aaron Rodgers are you going to get? First half of last season or second half of last season? Because second right. half of last season is the Hall of Fame quarterback that Aaron Rodgers is. First half of the season is getting bent by the Giants in the fourth quarter and looking like you don't know how to play quarterback. Right. Uh, so, like, I don't know. Um, for the Jets' sake, I would hope that after all of this, they get the second half of last season, Aaron Rodgers. And if they do, that's scary. And, uh, you know, you still have Allen in this division who has not been – playing anywhere near as sharp as he did. It's interesting. How much did Dable have? Well, that's what I was getting ready to say. Uh, so last year they lose Brian Dable. And look, look how Daniel Jones has been playing now since he got there. Magic! Exactly. Once <laughs> once the playoffs. They want a playoff game. And what happens with Josh Allen's first year without Brian Dable? Uh, turn the ball over like crazy. Uh, and also, Sean McDermott, the, the head coach for the Buffalo Bills, has been running him like crazy. And Josh Allen has been making terrible mistakes. He's not. He's taking more and more hits. And now this year, Leslie Frazier is gone, their defensive coordinator. And he is one of the best D coordinators in the game of football. So what's going to happen this year with that defense? And I think the big question is, does Tua stay healthy and avoid getting another concussion because if he gets another concussion, I don't know if he's going to be playing. Right. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. And that's still Miami, right? That team is built to win. Now they have about a two, three, maybe four year window max to win. Because as you all know, two, I mean, two was going to get paid. And once quarterbacks get paid, Jay, we all know it's tough to start paying other players who probably deserve to be, be paid too. Because um, quarterbacks get paid a crap ton of money. Like Daniel Jones is getting paid forty million dollars a year. Like what exactly, the hell? Exactly. Exactly. So, <laughs> so if Tua stays healthy all season, which I think he will, because he's looking, you know, just watching him in preseason and watching him in camp, he looks leaner, looks more in shape. He's taking care of his body. The whole jujitsu thing is actually working out for him because you can tell by the way he's falling when he gets hit. It's been helping him. If he stays healthy, Shane, the one in this division. This team is I, too talented. I think the easiest thing to guess is that the Patriots are losing this division dead last. Oh, absolutely. Because, like, I feel like each of the three other teams have big question marks around their quarterbacks for a variety of reasons. Is right. Allen going to bounce back? Is Rodgers going to be Aaron Rodgers? And is Tua going to stay healthy? And I don't see that the Bills did anything to make Josh Allen turn a corner. So I think they're going to underperform. I do feel like I am more skeptical and don't think Aaron Rodgers is going to be that Aaron Rodgers for a whole season. So, you know what? I'll I'll uh, reinforce that. Dolphins win this division. This is going to be an interesting one. Those East gonna divisions be a, always interesting. It's going to be it's going to be tough. And I mean th- those divisional games are going to be a lot of fun. Here's the thing with the Jets too, Shane. Uh just real quick. Their schedule especially the first half, is brutal. Buffalo at Dallas, New England, Kansas City, at Denver, and Philly. That's just the first six weeks. <laughs> oh, yeah. The only teams that I've really looked heavily at their schedule so far is the Eagles, who don't seem to have a very difficult schedule this season. And then the Giants, who I think the – sub. I think uh, the Giants pissed off somebody. Uh, oh, that schedule is brutal. Their schedule is brutal. <laughs> they have to play like seven primetime games this season with Daniel Jones. And I'm like, 
no. And then I think they're on the road, like six out of their first eight games or something like that. And they get the end of the season playing two out of three against the Eagles. And I'm like, and one of those on Christmas, actually, or Christmas yeah. Eve. Yeah. So, well, Merry Christmas to my brother because he's an Eagles fan. So, uh, but we'll get to that. We'll get to that in a little bit. Going to the AFC North. This is also an interesting division. Now, Rod, what are your general thoughts on how this is going to shake out? I mean, this is. I want to say it's it, it, it's borough borough country or borough's division because he has you know back to back years now gone to AFC championship games. You know, watching because I'm a big college football fan. Watching Joe Burrow in college, he I mean I I knew I was like this kid is going to be something special, and. The thing that holds him back is his injuries too. He gets hurt a lot as well. He's sidelined right now with a, I want to say hamstring. I want to say it's a hamstring injury. That's not, that's hamstring how it is. Hamstring injuries are not right fun, and they linger. Right, but they have beaten the Chiefs and lost the Chiefs, and Joe Burrow in his second season almost won a Super Bowl. I'm expecting them to win this division. However, I don't know if they're getting back to an AFC Championship game this year. I think there's an immense pressure on this team because I think they are one of the few, you know, three or four favorites, top top three or four favorites to win the Super Bowl. But I think this is their division to lose. How are you feeling about Lamar Jackson and the Ravens right now? Uh, they're going to be a playoff team, Shane. Because, you know, Baltimore, their thing is they always play great defense. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're one of the best defenses in the league consistently every single season. Um, they have a new offensive coordinator. Greg Roman's no longer there. I forgot I forgot the name, the, the name of the new guy who's there. But they did something that I, I wanted to do, which is give Lamar Jackson some really good receivers. Now we'll see how Odell Beckham plays out. But they've given Lamar Jackson some more weapons to work with. And... I think they'll be a wild card team this year. I do. Now, as far as you know, Pittsburgh and Cleveland goes, Pittsburgh is consistently they will always be over five hundred as long as my Tomlin's there. They came back strong. Them and the Packers at the end of last season, and yep. the Lions. Those three teams were looking real good at the second half of last season. I just don't trust Kenny Pickett. I do not trust him. And with no, Cleveland, no. it's what kind of, what version of Deshaun Watson are we getting? Because last year's Deshaun Watson, which okay, he hadn't played football in over two almost two years. So okay, he gets a pass for coming back. Now he's had a full off season. He's gotten some preseason reps in. No excuses this year. No excuses. You see them ending in last place in this division? Yes. Yes, but it's, I think they'll be improved. I do think they'll be improved. It's going to be an interesting one. I uh, it's I'm a big Lamar Jackson fan. I would love to see the Ravens win this division, but it's hard to go against Joe Burrow at this mm-hmm. point. So I think the Bengals have it. May ah, uh, you know what? Maybe Joe Burrow is the Peyton Manning to Mahomes' Brady. Mm-hmm. What's with the AFC just being like, you know, we just have a handful of quarterbacks and just going to dominate for two decades? Well, I mean, you could say Mahomes, Burrow. I mean, it was early, earlier in their careers, it was Mahomes and Jackson for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, Mahomes and Herbert, those games have always been fun. There's just too many very, very strong quarterbacks in the AFC. Well, the AFC is just top heavy loaded with. So, you know, great quarterback. So I don't even know who this was that did this QB ranking for the NFC, but they ranked Dak Prescott the number one quarterback in the NFC. And I'm like, so oh, this forgot oh. Jalen Hurts existed or no? Jalen Hurts is number two. And I'm yeah. like, um, no. Right. no. And then they're like, none of these quarterbacks would even be in the top seven. And the AFC. And I'm like, it's a bold statement, 
but there are a lot of great quarterbacks in the AFC. Well, someone recently asked me, like, who are my like top 10 quarterbacks in the league right now? I was like, well, Mahomes won, and I probably put Burrow or Hurts at number two. Um, Hurts is the only quarterback I had in my top 10. <laughs> oh, everything, everybody else was from the AFC. <laughs> Uh, it's basically what's going to happen with, we'll get to that, but Stafford and Goff, I feel like, have that potential. I'm a Giants fan, still not saying Jones anywhere near this. <laughs> but you prove something. Um, AFC South, is anybody coming anywhere close to the Jaguars this season? No. No, This is, if the Jags don't win this division this year, it's a Massive failure. Massive, massive failure. Or Trevor Lawrence gets hurt. Trevor Lawrence gets hurt, then maybe the Titans have a chance at something here. But I just feel like Trevor Lawrence came into his own, especially when when he made that four. four. So I thought he was going to he choked so hard in that playoff game. And then all of a sudden scored four touchdowns to come back. I'm like, oh, oh, crap. Well, look, I give Trevor Lawrence all the credit in the world because all Trevor Lawrence does is win. He never lost a game in college or not not in college, in high school. He lost like two or three games in college. All he does is win. Mm -hmm. So I give him a lot of credit. But that was more about uh, Brandon Staley choking in that playoff game. The head coach for the Chargers, then the Jags winning it. But, you know, that just looks like a outside of, you know, Trevor Lawrence is one of the rising star quarterbacks in the NFL. Yep. AFC South doesn't look very strong. Um, And I feel bad for Tennessee fans because they've got Derrick Henry and they're wasting prime Derrick Henry right now. And now D-Hop is there, DeAndre Hopkins. And I don't know why he went there. Well, I do know why. He got paid. And I'm happy he got paid. But uh, if you wanted to win, Tennessee would not be my first place I would want to go, just just being honest. So, listen, you have Ryan Tannehill throwing you the football. I, I Bad things probably will happen. They've so, had a quarterback problem, like, for a long time because when was the last time they had, like, a truly great quarterback? Yeah, no, can't think of it. Not top of my head. It's no, I mean, I maybe maybe Vince Mc, Young, McNair, and that yeah, I was like, gonna say McNair. Vince like Young was good almost twenty for years, years ago. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so that's bad. So that's a I mean, Vince Young had a couple good years. Uh, Marcus Mariota was okay for them when he got to that. When he got there, they he just kind of got screwed over. But it, uh, you know, it's whatever. Uh, very interesting. That's a, it's so crazy thinking back to Vince Young, Matt Leinart, <laughs> who were supposed to come out of college and be like the next great duo in the NFL. Look, and quarterbacks that come out of USC typically don't do well in the pros. I'm just, I'm just saying. There you go. Well, sorry, Colts and Texans fans. Um, <laughs> give the Texans two years. They'll be, they're going to be really, really good. But give them, give them a couple years. Gonna need to give the Colts a little while, cause yeah, I look like straight trash. Uh, absolutely. I mean, they're gonna be one of the five worst teams in football this year. They're gonna be, they're gonna be awful. AFC West, which well, I think is the second best division in football, honestly. Well, we got Mahomes and the Chiefs. Okay, yeah, next next division. Who are definitely winning it, <laughs> but you got the Chargers. And Herbert, uh-huh. are they uh-huh. getting back to the playoffs? No, no. I don't have them going back to the playoffs this year. Where do the Broncos lie this season with Sean Payton taking over? They will be improved. They will have more than four wins. Here's the open. But I, I think they're a year away. Have a have a year of Russell. Learning, you know, how to work with with Sean Payton, 
getting used to the system. I think they might struggle early. I think Broncos fans might still feel that frustration from last year. Mm-hmm. But I think, you know, post-Thanksgiving, which is when a lot of teams start, you know, good teams really start getting hot and stuff, I think you'll start seeing them get a little hot. But because they're in the division with Herbert, Mahomes, it's probably not going to happen. Jimmy G. Just me, Jesus. I mean, uh, okay. Yeah, but they're, they're, they're coming in last place. I'll just say that. The Raiders are coming in last place this year. Well, there no you go. To, uh, to, the na- uh, to the NFC. The NFC why? East. Why? <laughs> just why? Commander's last place. I don't know, Shane. I... Don't do this to me. <laughs> Shane, I... <laughs> This division, because look, here's the thing with the NFC East, right? No team has won this division in back to back years in quite some time. You know, I really think it's going to be the Eagles, especially with how their schedule is and the fact that they have the most talented team in this division. Look, I'm not, I'm not saying the Eagles aren't going to win it. I do think they're going to win it, but I'm not going to be surprised if Dallas or Washington sneaks. Look, I believe in Washington. I believe Ron Rivera. If they can figure out the quarterback situation, which they've already named the starting quarterback, and I, I watched the kid a lot in college, he's he was very solid. Uh, this uh, Sam Howell, we'll see how it plays out. You know, people were taking a lot of stock in this preseason game he just had on Monday. He looked good, but he was going up against the Ravens' second unit, which is you know, and that's backups for crying out loud. Yeah, uh, but I I think this this this, this division to me is always fascinating because. Any given, any especially with these division game, divisional games, uh, Shane, you could turn on a Eagles Washington Commanders game and be like, "Oh, Shem, I, the Eagles might lose this." I do think that Dallas Cowboys are going to be by far the best team to not win their division this season. They're going to be one of those like extremely strong wild cards in the NFC. You know, I probably would have agreed with you about a couple months ago, but I think for me, I think the best team to not win a division is coming from the AFC North. I really think I think Baltimore's got a chip on the shoulder this year, Shane. Let me rephrase that. Well, did I say NFC? I thought I said yeah. NFC. So, I was talking about oh, you said okay, yeah, okay, NFC, okay, yeah, okay. My bad. I, I must have heard you. Do, okay, so yeah, yeah. NFC, yeah. They're just unlucky at this point to be in the same division as the Eagles. Um, but those games are always entertaining, though. Eagles Cowboys games start. Oh, they sure best, are. Always some of the best games um, of the year. Was that Thanksgiving this past year that they played each other? I think and it was Christmas Eve. The, it was Christmas. All I yeah. know is I was eat, I was at my mom's, uh, and the game was on, and Jalen Hurts didn't play. So. Yeah, Thanksgiving was Giants Cowboys this past year. Oh yeah, uh, I think this year it's. What is that? I think this year's Thanksgiving. I think it's Dallas and. Now I'm confused. I don't even know who the. I don't. I, don't, I know it's not Philly. Why well, look it up? You can boy, talk if it was it Philly, that would be exciting. Um, that would be exciting. I I don't think the Giants did enough to give Daniel Jones the receivers that he needs to actually make a big impact. Mm-hmm. I'm just hoping they don't come in last, please. That's my hope as a Giants fan, but we'll find out. Um, if they make the playoffs, hopefully they're playing the Vikings again. So, <laughs> uh, Kirk Cousins in prime time. God, I love it. Well, we proved that. Daniel Jones in prime time is better than Kirk Cousins in prime time, apparently. Apparently. So uh, I did find out that the Cowboys Thanksgiving game. It is Washington. That'll be interesting. Yep. It'll be an interesting game. Speaking of Thanksgiving, them Lions in the NFC North. So the Lions hype came because they ended the season very, very strong. Mm-hmm. And also, Aaron Rodgers is now gone. So this division is wide, wide open, Shane. Um, well, really, what I mean by wide open, I mean Vikings. Lions and Vikings. Lions. Yeah. Yeah. Bears. Uh, 
not great. They will be improved. They will be improved. And the Packers will be last place. I actually still think the Bears are coming last place. I think Jordan Love will actually impress some of us this year. And they'll be a solid seven and ten, eight, eight, nine squad. They're gonna be that team that no one is happy to not have the Aaron Rodgers drama. Yes, so they can actually just focus on football. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, do you oh we didn't talk about that. Do you think Aaron Rodgers is gonna be a bigger problem in New York because now he has a bigger outlet to yes, yes, absolutely Aaron Rodgers? When when the Jets lose games, it is sport uh, ESPN on Mondays is going to be fantastic. I can't wait. It's going to be wonderful. I I believe in Goff and that team that steamrolled through the second half of the season. I think they could pull out a surprise division win. Because, you know, the Vikings won in the regular season, but, you know, I don't think I'd miss them not making the playoffs because they're just going to choke anyway. Because the NFC is weak, I do think both the Lions and Vikings will get in um, the playoffs this year. Well, yeah, I do think not be the Lions. Two teams from the South. I'll, I'll get to, we'll get to that in a second. We'll I, get I, to have that a, in a second. I have I have a sleeper team in the South, but I do think the Lions, Lions and Vikings. I mean, both those divisional games are going to be entertaining as hell. Yep. Um, I think the Lions slinging will edge it TDs out. everywhere. Yep. <laughs> I I just have this Dan Campbell effect, man. It's just it's wore off on me. So I I believe in these Lions. I believe in Jared Goff. I think they're going to pull it out. But the Vikings will get in as a wild card. So, you know, but we get Kirk Cousins in prime time on the road, which is even better. (laughs) So my big question for the NFC South, does Derek Carr shine in New Orleans? So they are actually my pick to win in division this year. Uh, I have seen enough in preseason and, you know, done my research to know that this division won't be as awful as I think some people think it will be. Um, I think the AFC South will be the worst division in football this year. I think the Jags are going to run away with that division. Mm-hmm. This division is going to be fun because you got a brand new quarterback, Bryce Young, the Carolina Panthers. That's mm-hmm. always fun. Atlanta, they just drafted this running back who is going to be so much fun to watch, and they just revamped. They, they spent a whole lot of money on their team. They're going to be a lot of fun to watch this year. Uh, new Orleans is going to be. That's my sleeper team in the NFC this year, Shane. I think Derek Carr is going to ball out with all those weapons, and they're going to win that division. 10, 10, 11 games they're going to win this year. I think they're. I think he's going to be so happy to be out of Vegas. And now I'm questioning where the Raiders play now. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say out of Oakland. I'm like, wait a minute. They don't play there anymore, do they? Um, no, I think he just – I think he's gonna be happy to be not a Raider anymore. Yeah, and he's gonna come into New Orleans and who I feel like if they had a quarterback that like really had the skills, they could have won that division last season. Well, they've been so spoiled with Drew Brees for the past, all those years. You know, they were definitely due for a downfall last year. Yeah. Of course, wasn't the way they wanted it to go, but I mean, you lose one of the best quarterbacks to ever play the game. You're, you're, you're due for a down year. Yeah. But you get Derek Carr, who is a well-established veteran who has, has playoff experience. Apparently has the most comeback victories Derek Carr in the NFL. Very underappreciated quarterback. He's going – New Orleans is winning this division. They will. Well, I think him being buried in the AFC West was not helping him. And no. now he's going to a prime space to just – really flourish where he could beat the shit out of the N- NFC South. So, Well, look, if he had went to Washington, we'd be having a different conversation because he'd be in the same division with Dak and Jalen so, and Danny Dimes. So, you know. So I think I think he found the right place for him to really stand out. And then the NFC West, this is interesting. Well, Cardinals are coming in last, right? They are going to have the number one pick in the draft next year. I'm I'm banking on it. They're 
Yeah, every every ranking that I've looked at power rankers for the NFL, they're number 32. So yeah. there you go. Is Stafford gonna bounce back? Yes, but not right away. I think it's gonna be a couple weeks. I think there's gonna be some rust. But let's not be mistaken. This these guys just won the Super Bowl two years ago. Yeah. So let's not act like these guys are just the you know the bottom of the NFC. These this is still Sean McVay and Jared Go- I'm Jared Goff and Matthew Stafford and Cooper Cup. And Aaron Donald, last time I checked, is still on that team. So this is gonna be a tough one because Geno Smith and the Seahawks came out of nowhere. Well, listen. I think I we're, we're not we're not doing playoffs just yet, but I think there's a possibility that three teams could be making it into the playoffs next year. Well, and hopefully the 49ers don't get down to a fifth string quarterback and have to play in the playoffs that way. But like they, the fact that they because that was the NFC Championship game was that not that they it made was. it to. Mm-hmm. On how many string backs? Well, look, Brock Purdy came in and shocked the world as Mr. Irrelevant, yep. and he lit it up. And then, you know, he got hurt. And then the Eagles hurt another quarterback. Too. Yep. And then all hell just broke loose. Now, look, I don't know, even with Brock Purdy, if they were going to beat the Eagles. The Eagles were just on another level. But the game definitely would have been a lot closer than what it ended up being. Mm-hmm. That's for sure. But I think the 49ers, because they lost their quarterback, they are going to be on this revenge mission all year. Long. I think they're winning that division. Oh, no, they, it's it's not going to be a big close, Shane. This division might be over by Thanksgiving. Seriously. it's All I'm going to say is, I know a lot of 49ers fans are very frustrated. I get it. They weren't fluke injuries during that game. The Eagles beat the shit out of them. Yeah. So, like, they weren't like, oh, I slipped and got hurt in a fluke injury and you were winning the game. The Eagles' defense came and punished them and then for some reason decided not to show up in the Super Bowl. But whatever. Uh, (laughs) Because, boy, did the Eagles' defense look like a sieve. And Patrick Mahomes, who had one good leg – just was like, well, every time I have this ball, I'm scoring a touchdown, and you're not going to do a single thing about it. And that's exactly what happened, which, spoiler alert, so we got through all these divisions. I still think the Chiefs are winning the Super Bowl because <laughs> if Patrick Mahomes with one bad leg can beat the Eagles like that, assuming he's healthy, what the hell is anybody supposed to do against them? Yeah. So This is going to be... The playoffs this year are going to be so freaking good, Shane. I am because I think we're going to have a lot of top level talent in this in this year's playoffs. Uh, as far as the AFC goes, look, I'm 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 still sticking my home. I'm going to be a, that Dolphins guy. I I think my Dolphins are going to get to the Super Bowl this year, but they're going to have to go to Arrowhead to to get there. I do think they're going to have probably one of the toughest roads to get to the Super Bowl. But I do think two will, will edge out Mahomes and knock out the Giants for at least one year and get to the Super Bowl, get to Vegas and play for the Super Bowl. In the NFC, we're getting that rematch, Eagles Niners. This time it's going to be in San Francisco. And I still think the Eagles are going to win. <laughs> and I think we're going to get a Dolphins Eagles Super Bowl, Jalen versus Tua. And Tua wins it. I I'm going out, and I I honestly feel like we're getting a rematch in the Super Bowl, and I'm really interested to see if it's going to turn out any different. Because Jalen Hurts had to play the game of his life to even keep up with Patrick Mahomes. That's really sad, and. It's that that's the main reason why I'm not betting against the for uh, betting against the Chiefs because like that that was unreal. Like so here's I, the thing to look out for with the Chiefs this year, Shane. Mm-hmm. 
their offensive line, they lost one of their best tackles. He's at, He went to Cincinnati. And offensive lines mean everything. They really, they really do. Uh, talk about people who need to get paid, who probably should be paid a lot. Offensive linemen need to be paid a lot more than they probably than what they are. But also, the offensive coordinator, Eric Bieniemy, is now gone. He is now the OC of Washington. I don't think it's going to have a Brian Dable effect, like it's going, like it's going, like what's going on with Josh Allen. But just, 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 just watch Mahomes, especially early in the season. Like how does losing his OC, how does that affect him? That being said. Mahomes still has probably the second best coach playing uh, coaching in the in the game right now, which is Andy Reid. So uh, maybe even the best coach in the league right now because Bel- because of Belichick struggles. But uh, yeah, just 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 be just be curious, just be look out for that this year. Just look out for that. So because baseball keeps messing me up because they keep changing their playoffs. Three wild card teams, right? Correct. So Correct. AFC. Baseball just can't stay. So it's like, we're going to keep adding more, more. <laughs> um, AFC. So we have Dolphins, Bengals, Jaguars, Chiefs winning yes. divisions. And then we have. You definitely so we definitely said Ravens. Yeah, Ravens are definitely get in that spot. I do think the Jets are going to get in. I do. Jets. And I think the last one's going to come down between Chargers, Bills. I I give a slight edge to Josh Allen. I think Buffalo will still find a way to get in. Isn't that crazy? There's a chance that you have Allen, Herbert, Mahomes, and Burrow and one of them probably won't make the playoffs. That's insane. Just imagine taking some of them and throwing them in the NFC. <laughs> it, oh it's like God. seismic change of a whole entire conference. Well, look, if Lamar didn't be signed with Baltimore, I thought he should have left, but that's just. Can you, you imagine what Lamar would be like on San Francisco? Oh my goodness. Just call the NFC a wrap. Now that's done. Lamar on the 49ers, Shane. Just just that's it. NFC's done. So Eagles. Yes. Lions. Yes. Saints. Yes, we agree on that. 49ers. Absolutely. Seahawks and Rams and Cowboys. Cowboys definitely. It's just it, this is tough because it's a lot of mediocrity. <laughs> there, I think there's a lot of potential to like implode. Yes. Like if the, if the Rams don't, here here's the thing. Honestly. I think the Vikings are too consistent in the regular season to not make well, the playoffs. Say, so I think I think for me it's going to be Cowboys, Vikings, and probably Seahawks or Rams for that last spot. Mm-hmm. So definitely not I, anybody from the South. No, only the Saints are making it out of there. And unless Commanders or the Giants are doing enough to and the Rams are not. The Giants' schedule is brutal. I mean, that, that schedule is just a gauntlet. I'm going to be a sad, sad football fan this season. <laughs> you guys play us this year, too, actually. Well, that doesn't make it any better. <laughs> In Miami. <laughs> that doesn't make it any better. <laughs> hey, look, your first two, your first like five games, look, you got Dallas at home, you're at Arizona, you're at San Francisco. Oh. Seattle. Oh, at least they could win the Arizona game. Yeah, see, so you can go on to the San Francisco game one and one, and then get your ass beat on Thursday Night Football. Yeah, so I'm trying to pull up like the actual. Uh, might as well just Giants. 
NFL schedule. Let's see this gem. Oh, I'm looking at it right now. God, this schedule is brutal. Good Lord. So, Cowboys lose. Mm -hmm. Beat the Cardinals. Lose to the 49ers. Is that at home against the Seahawks? Yep. Home. Monday Night Football. Oh, shit. Well, they're going to lose that game. Uh, One and three. One and four. Lose to the Dolphins. Probably one and five. Lose to the Bills. They're home against the Commanders. I said that's a win. They'll probably win. They'll probably win the five. Commanders. Yeah. Home against the Jets. They can win that game. That's a well, one yeah, o'clock they, game. They beat, they beat Aaron Rodgers in the first half of last season. I could give it to them. Three and five. Raiders. <laughs> four and five. Hold on. Cowboys. Hold on. What 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 what's Danny Dines gonna be doing in Vegas? <laughs> you know, he's partying a little too much with Garoppolo. Well, it's a four twenty five game, so I think they're okay. Uh, <laughs> Losing the Cowboys four and six, probably lose. Uh, they're playing the Commanders on my birthday and Washington. I feel like they're going to split that. Yeah, so four and seven. Season. Okay, four and seven. I think they could beat the Patriots five and seven. Packers six. You know what? This isn't looking so bad. But then they, ha- oh God. Saints, yeah, this is what Eagles, the- Rams. Eagles. Ooh. Ooh. So, Ooh. not looking great there. So, yeah, I don't think they're making the playoffs. Look at all, all these primetime games, too. One. That's two, what I said. Three, four, five. Good Lord. I mean. Go do that to Kirk Cousins. Go do that to the Giants. Actually, I, actually, I want to know how many primetime games Kirk Cousins has this year. Uh, probably not a lot because nobody gives a crap about the Vikings at this point. Oh, well, let's see. We're gonna find out. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, they have the same. So ah, so they're just punishing both Kirk Cousins. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna see. I I think, well, you know, either way. It's going to be a crazy Super Bowl again, and it's going to be thoroughly entertaining. It's not going to be a Patriots Rams. Oh, that was Brutal. that was here in Atlanta too. And that I that 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 was rough. That, that was, was a boring tough. game. Yeah, and Tom Bra- like Tom Brady was just playing with them. You know, the one minute he's like, oh, crap, I need to actually score a touchdown, and throws like five passes to Gronk and just gets a touchdown. He's like, well, you know, at that moment, he was just not foot on the gas. Yeah. And that's what Tom Brady does. He's not going to – Tom Brady is not the kind of person, especially towards the end of his career, that was just going to try to throw up five touchdowns a game for Mm -hmm. the hell of it. So – well, the, like, the Rams. Like the Rams had a out. They had a really legit defense that year. Their, their offense just because that was so golf, right? Mm-hmm. Before they made the switcheroo. I mean, it was the right choice, and potentially, well, it paid off for the Rams. They won the Super Bowl with Stafford, and Lions are looking a lot better. So, yeah. we'll see. Uh, if this is at was it last season or the year the season before where we had just like electric playoffs? So it was two. It was the year the Rams and the Bengals went to the Super Bowl. Yeah. So oh yeah. Two years ago. That that because uh, there was a Chiefs Bills. Chiefs Bills. One of the maybe the greatest playoff game we've ever ever seen. Just sling blades. It was like slinging touchdowns. I have never seen a game just go so haywire so quickly. I mean, just back and forth, especially like the last 13 seconds of the game. I mean, we're never going to see a playoff game like that ever again. I was watching that game with my my you know, my uh, mom, dad, and grandpa. We're all just sitting there like, what in the world did we just watch? But... Well, we're gonna we're in for an interesting season of football, and one of us is probably gonna be a much happier fan. Um, but that's okay. It happens. 
I'm a Giants fan. I don't go into any season expecting them to be good. They won two Super Bowls when I thought they were going to be crap. So there you go. Well, just be the sixth seed and then, and you'll be fine. Just be a. That's exactly what happens. It's all the Giants need. They don't need to win divisions. No, just be a six they seed. Be nine yeah. and seven. Or I guess now 10 and ten seven. And seven. Yep. And then just slip on in there and skate on by and have Eli Eli magic. <laughs> oh my lord! I don't even. I, the fact he, that he ended his career with as many Super Bowls as Peyton made zero sense. Well, Peyton was also a turnover machine, so it doesn't surprise me. Peyton should have more than two. I, I'm just thinking it's back to Tom that, Brady and that and the three also, of them just insane. Well, also I, I think back to the all the times Peyton was in the Super Bowl. You know, of course, he beat the Bears, but then he went up against New Orleans that year, which was just I mean, no one must be that New Orleans team. That New, that was just a team of destiny. They Drew Brees was on a mission to win a Super Bowl for that city. And then Peyton and what the Broncos got their asses handed to them by the Seahawks. I mean, you want to talk about one of the worst Super Bowls ever made or ever made ever uh or one of the one of the all time worst Super Bowls team. That's up there. Is that up there with the Ravens Giants? Mm. Oh yeah. Because I'm pretty sure the Giants only scored two field goals. Yeah, well man, those Ravens teams were just too good though, Shane. And the Giants had Kerry Collins. You know, Shane, listen, I know you're upset about your Giants, but it's okay. You have Danny Dimes. Making forty million dollars a year for one good season. <laughs> Taking the money away from Saquon. Good for him. Speaking of being buried like Derrick Henry, like, uh, I just yeah, feel like that's... the Giants are wasting Saquon Barkley, and anybody would pay anything to have him at this point. And it's just like, uh, how long is he going to stick around? Imagine a team like Buffalo or Kansas City with a Saquon Barkley. Can you imagine him going back to Pennsylvania Pride and jumping to the Eagles? Penn State kid. Either that or going to Pittsburgh. I mean, that too. One or the other. Yeah, one or the other. I mean, he probably fit better in Philly just because. I don't know. want to think about the Eagles with Barkley. Oh, my God. That, that, I mean, that's just unfair. I mean, honestly, that's just, that's just unfair at that point, Shane. You know, he still wouldn't play against the Giants, though, because they have the Giants Slayer. Oh, yeah, Boston Scott. The greatest running back of all time. Against the New York Giants, specifically. Yep. Scoring six touchdowns a game. <laughs> Just imagine if he played the Giants every single game. <laughs> <laughs> but, Rod, thank you so much for coming on and chatting some football. Maybe we could do another one of these at the end of the season going into the playoffs and seeing how this actually turned out. I been very much I you know I, I would do our mid turn mid turn mid season check in Shane that'd be a lot of fun. Thanksgiving ish, I guess before the Yeah, but after Thanksgiving. Yeah, probably around that time. Cause that's when football really starts getting like really heated is after after Thanksgiving. But Rod, thank you so much for coming on. Oh, it was a pleasure, Shane. Thank you for having me. Thank all of you out there for always tuning in and supporting your Wasteland Reviewer.